Good day everyone! In this video, we will discuss about coterminal and reference angles. We have discussed previously that positive angles are being formed when the rotation of the terminal side is in clockwise direction. On the other hand, negative angles are being formed when the rotation of the terminal side is in clockwise direction. Moreover, in a coordinate system, an angle is said to be in standard position if its initial side lies along the positive x-axis and its vertex at the origin. This time, let us discuss about co-terminal angles. Given angles alpha and beta in standard position, we say that alpha and beta are co-terminal if they have the same terminal sides. Looking at this figure, notice that the given alpha, which is this one, and the given beta lies on the same terminal side. Therefore, we can say that alpha and beta are coterminal angles. In finding a coterminal angle x of a given angle theta, x is equal to theta plus 360 degrees times n, or x equals theta minus 360 degrees times n, where n is a natural number. Let us consider this example. Give two coterminal angles of 330 degrees. To find a coterminal angle, we simply add or subtract 360 degrees to or from the given angle. Therefore, if we want to look for the positive coterminal angle, then we simply need to add 360 degrees to the given angle. So therefore, since the given angle is equal to 330 degrees, then a positive coterminal angle is equal to 330 degrees plus 360 degrees which is equal to 690 degrees. Illustrating the given angle, we have, since we have the angle 330 degrees, then it means that it lies in the fourth quadrant. Suppose this is 330 degrees. In determining a positive coterminal angle, of 330 degrees, we need to generate first one whole revolution which is equal to 360 degrees. To do that, we can draw one whole rotation, 360 degrees, and then another 330 degrees, which will still lie on the same terminal side. Therefore, 360 degrees plus another 330 degrees, this angle is equal to 690 degrees. For the negative coterminal angle, we can subtract 360 degrees from the given angle. Therefore, we will have 330 degrees minus 360 degrees is equal to negative 30 degrees. Illustrating the two angles, we will have this. Remember that 330 degrees lies in the fourth quadrant. So, assume that this is our given 330 degrees and our negative coterminal angle, which is negative 30 degrees, is this one. Notice that 330 degrees and negative 30 degrees are coterminal angles. Let us have another one. Find the smallest positive angle that is coterminal with negative 260 degrees. Since we were asked of the smallest positive angle, it means that the rotation of our terminal side should be in the counterclockwise direction. We can actually illustrate first negative 260 degrees. So negative 260 degrees in standard form, it actually lies in the second quadrant with a rotation 
or with the direction of clockwise direction. So, say, this is your angle, negative 260 degrees. In finding the smallest positive angle, it means that what we need is this angle here. Knowing that this is negative 260 degrees, it follows that this small angle is actually equal to 10 degrees. From this point up to this point is equal to 90 degrees plus 10 degrees, so that will give us 100 degrees. Notice that when you add the measurements of the two given angles here, it will be equal to one revolution which is 360 degrees. Therefore, in solving, if we are after the positive coterminal angle, remember that we simply need to add the given theta or the given angle to 360 degrees. So therefore, we're gonna have negative 260 degrees plus 360 degrees is equal to 100 degrees. Therefore, the smallest positive angle that is coterminal with a given angle, negative 260 degrees, is the angle that measures 100 degrees. This time, let us discuss about reference angles. The reference angle of an angle in standard position is the acute positive angle between the terminal side and the x-axis. Again, remember that the reference angle should be an acute angle that is between the terminal side and the x-axis. If we're going to illustrate reference angles, let us consider each quadrant. If your angle is in quadrant 1, the reference angle is always equal to the given angle. If your angle is in quadrant 2, then your reference angle is equal to 180 degrees minus the given angle. From this illustration, note that the reference angle is this angle here because this is the angle that is between the x-axis and the terminal side. So therefore, to solve for this angle, we simply need to subtract the given angle from 180 degrees. If your angle is in the third quadrant, then the reference angle is equal to the given angle minus 180 degrees. From the illustration, if this is your given angle, then the reference angle is this angle between the x-axis and the terminal side. So, to solve for this angle here, then we need to subtract 180 degrees from the given angle. Finally, if your angle is in the fourth quadrant, notice that the reference angle is this acute angle here, which is between the x-axis and the terminal side. Therefore, to solve this angle here, given that we have this measurement here, then the reference angle will be equal to 360 degrees minus the given angle. Let us have an example. Find the reference angle of the angle that measures 125 degrees. If we're going to illustrate the given angle 125 degrees, then we can see that it actually lies in quadrant 2. Approximately, since 125 degrees is greater than 90 degrees by 35 degrees, then say for example that this is actually our angle which is 125 degrees. Determining the reference angle, remember that the reference angle should be between the terminal side and the x-axis. Therefore, you can see that the reference angle is this acute angle here. Therefore, since the given angle 125 degrees lies in the second quadrant, then the reference angle will be equal to 
180 degrees minus the given theta. Since we have 125 here, so we're gonna have 180 minus 125. Therefore, the reference angle is equal to 55 degrees. So therefore, this angle here is equal to 55 degrees. Another example, find the reference angle of the angle that measures 7 pi over 4. If you were given an angle in radian measure, it would be quite difficult for you to imagine where does this angle lies. Therefore, you can actually convert first the given radian measure into degrees. So to do that, remember that in converting radian to degrees, we need to multiply the given by 180 degrees all over pi. So with that, we will have 7 times 45. So 7 times 45 is equal to 315 degrees. From this given measure, we can now easily determine where does this angle lies. Illustrating this one, we can see that 315 degrees lies in the fourth quadrant. Since we are after the reference angle, so, we need to determine the measurement of the acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side. Therefore, the reference angle is this one. Since the given angle is in the fourth quadrant, then the reference angle is equal to 360 minus the given angle. So, therefore, 360 minus 315 will give us 45 degrees. Therefore, this angle measures 45 degrees. But since you were given an angle in radian measure, then it is only proper to express your answer in radian measure as well. So converting 45 degrees to radian measure, then we will multiply 45 degrees by pi all over 180 degrees. So we're gonna have 45 pi over 180 and expressing 45 over 180 in lowest term, we will have pi over 4. Therefore, the reference angle of 7 pi over 4 is pi over 4. I hope that you have understood the lesson. For the next video, we will discuss about linear and angular measures. Thank you so much for listening and see you on our next discussion.